Hello, my soccer universe, and welcome to the international break. I'm wearing my only national team jersey of a team that is still in the qualification process, meaning he <laughs> no more. My dream is to have of every nation that is at Euro 2020 or well, 21, however you want to call it, to have a jersey. And yeah, it means I already need to get at least three. Maybe Iceland will get uh, pull me out on the other side. I realize this is unfortunately a fake. So I'm going to get a real Iceland jersey as well. Um, before we look at the matchups and look also uh, at favorites and so on in the, all these matchups, there are one-offs played on Thursday evening. Corona will have a huge impact. I actually, I mean, we all know that now playing these, uh, 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 you know, uh, internationals is maybe given a pandemic, having uh, people travel all over the place, Maybe not the smartest thing to begin with, and also with all the trouble and the fixture congestion, I think maybe national teams could have taken a step back, except maybe for finishing the qualifiers. Um, and maybe, you know, the Nations League could have compressed as well to not have home home and away, but I know it's all about money. However, I have to say, I don't mind now. We know, for instance, that uh, the teams from Rome and Florence are not allowed to travel based on the health authorities, which could have huge implications, especially for the Serbian national team. Uh, but then uh, also Salzburg almost did not send players. And uh, at first, you know, on Sunday, they all uh, there are a few positive cases. Then on Monday, they're all negative. So they're traveling uh, after. It's madness. And if teams are traveling uh, and their uh, national teams are only playing friendlies or the Nations League, I think I'm fine with that. But where I'm really drawing a line is, uh, and where it becomes a little bit farcically, is if you cannot get players uh, for a qualifying one-off playoff. And yeah, it leads us right to the playoffs. Honestly, all these four matches, I expect at least half of them going to penalties and I don't expect many goals overall. Uh, the first one is the last one in this list here, uh, the Path D final between Georgia and North Macedonia. Uh, on the surface of it, it's a wide open game. Georgia is slightly favored because they play at home. But other than that, I really think this is a wide open game uh, and then we have three slots and I'm wearing Iceland I really hope that Iceland will make it because I find it a little bit of a travesty they are the only team from uh, League A that was in the playoff and they have to play away from home against Hungary that does not seem right that does not seem right Hungary was in League C when it when, when they got if you have this you should have at least that the teams from a higher league should always have a home game so this actually hands uh, Hungary a huge advantage, I would say, and I would favor Hungary to go through. Um, and while I would love to see a traditional power like Hungary qualifying once more for the European Championships, I'm firmly on the side of Iceland this time around. I think uh, under, under uh, the different circumstances, I would have done it. I, I, my allegiances would be definitely more split. Northern Ireland against Slovakia is the playoff B final. Uh, totally unexpected in many ways. Um, I have to say this is to me uh, an open book. Again, slight advantage in Northern Ireland because they play at home. Uh, Slovakia probably would have the more talented squad. But honestly, Slovakia, what they have been showing as of late, I don't know. I don't know. And the big one is Serbia against Scotland, but honestly, it would not be much of a contest if it wasn't for all those COVID cases. Uh, or, you know, or, you know, if the Roman like Milinkovic Savic cannot join join up with the um, national team, if they would all play, I think Serbia are clear favorites. They are a way superior team to Scotland. But if they would not play, I actually think it will be a much more even affair. Um, and the pressure is on Serbia, so. Uh, I'm, you know, Serbia has never been doing well under pressure. So that's where what's going to happen Thursday evening. That's what I'm going to watch. I'm not sure if I will watch any friendly, so you will not hear from that from me, but I will uh, review these four games. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Who will make it to Euro uh, 2020 slash 2021 of these four teams? Um, I, I have to say two matchups actually the Hungary, Iceland, the Serbia, Scotland matchup 
I think those are the more uh, enticing of the other ones. It's a little bit, you know, you wouldn't, I mean, Slovakia yes, has been there, Northern Ireland has been there, but still, that all those not the immediate teams that you would expect at a year, especially Georgia and North Macedonia. But hey, that was the mode. Uh, the format. Uh, before I leave you with my greetings, I want to just comment on, on the wall. I decided uh, to take the current uh, rankings that I have, which are combined FIFA and e, uh, the ELO rating, and hang them accordingly. So Belgium, France, Portugal, Spain, England, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, and then we have Croatia, Switzerland, Poland, Ukraine, Sweden, and Austria. There is, uh, there should be Wales and there should be Denmark ahead are somewhere in there, but I don't have national teams. And I decided to put the most recent jersey of this to make it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, if you want to see more of Euro 2020 uh, commentary from me, uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know who you think will win those four games. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.